Where do I start with this? To take you back to um, my question, why would Nessa do this? I have to take you back to this book here. Uh, this is an Excel Success One HSC book. It's got like all the past papers. Uh, this one, 2008 to 2019. Now these are really great resources. Only issue being that in 2020, they updated the new syllabus. And so that means all of the questions that were in the old syllabus um, that aren't applicable there really can't be used. Um, what they've done is they've updated those particular questions and added some new ones, which is a great idea in theory. Um, but then one of my students showed me a question, not exactly like this, but it looks something like this. The probability density function is given by f of x equals to 6x minus, minus x, find e of x. Uh, and if you've seen that before, e of x is the expected value or the mean. They mean the same thing. So what's the problem with this? Well, the problem is that uh, you may be forgiven for thinking, oh, this is just probably one of those questions that my teacher forgot to show me or something like that. Um, when I was in class, though, uh, I saw this question and I intentionally didn't show my students. And the reason why is that if you look in the syllabus, um, there are uh, questions which are defined that they can ask and the questions which aren't defined that um, they don't mention, right? And in year 11, 12, when it comes to this topic, the biggest difference is that in year 11, you learn something called the discrete random variable. And in year 12, you learn something about the continuous one. Um, this is not a video to explain the differences between them, but the short answer is the discrete ones are whole numbers. So, you know, like rolling a die, what kind of things can you expect? Uh, continuous is like <clears throat> waiting for a train, like how long do you think uh, you might have to wait? Because, you know, you can have continuous things, such as like one minute, two minutes, or three minutes. You can have, you know, seconds, milliseconds, and so on, right? But uh, the question here, find E of X. Well, in year 11, you are asked to find the expected value um, or the variance of these discrete probability distributions. But in year 12, it makes no mention of that. You look at the dot points, it says, okay, um, you need to be able to find the mode for a density function uh, and then find the cumulative, the running distribution, running total distribution function um, and you know find the median and other percentiles, but no mention of the mean and variance for those ones. So is it in or is it out? Well, um, before I get into that, just to clarify what I'm talking about with the year 11 topic, this here, this is from the sample paper, this is fair game. Um, this says find the expected value and the variance of x here, and it's given you this table, you have the knowledge to do that. There's a solution there if you, if you want to look at that, okay? But the continuous one, now this is where it's a topic of debate, because you know, the syllabus is straight from the syllabus here, it says no mention of uh, finding mean or variance. But, um, you know, because this is a new topic, this is a new uh, syllabus, you guys are the first time to do this in 2020, uh, a lot of different resources have included it. And it's an idea of, oh, let's just teach it just to be safe kind of thing. So, for example, Mass and Focus, they don't include that. Um, Cambridge does include it. Fitzpatrick, I actually didn't check that one. Um, I should check that. Looks like Fitzpatrick does include that. And Terry well, I couldn't even find anything about probability density functions. I may have just missed it. Someone can correct me, but uh, yeah, that's where we're at with all these, uh, you know, the big four textbooks here. So where does that leave us? Um, well, so I reached out to Nessa and the reply was something along the lines of, uh, no, it's not in it, but yes, we can give it to them only if we gave them the formula, right? <laughs> so, let me say that again. They said, no, it's not in the syllabus as uh, is defined by that document. Um, but if we were to ask that kind of question, we would give them a formula to do it. So it just seems like they've given a clause or like a backdoor to uh, asking that question if they really want to in the HSE exam, which I don't know why they would because there's so many th questions that they can ask. Um, but for some reason, that's kind of where we're at. So where does that leave us? Well, just to add some more confusion into the mix, um, there's this document called the Nessa Topic Guidance. And so just to really clarify, this is not a syllabus uh, document. Um, and there's some really long disclaimer somewhere amongst all of this that uh, it doesn't define the scope of problems that they can be asked in an HSC exam. So it's used to inform the scope of content and but we do not define the scope of problems main counter. Okay, so that's just really clear. But what they do talk about is this quote unquote formula that um, Nessa was referring to in their response. And it's this, the expected value can be found using this and the uh, variance can be found using this, okay? All right. 
So the ironic thing out of all of this actually is the, the actual problem of finding the expected value and finding the variance of a continuous random variable or probability density function is actually not all that hard. It's well within the ability of advanced mathematics students um, given certain constraints and things like that. But for some reason, Nessa hasn't decided to include it in officially, um, but is there unofficially. <laughs> Very clear? Confused? Me too. Okay. Um, the takeaway from all of that is that I just want to show you an example of this kind of question so that just in case they do happen to ask it and, and be aware that they have said that if we were to ask it, that we would give you a formula. And this is the formula over here, right? Um, just some things about the notation. If you're not used to seeing the negative infinity to infinity, um, the result will be the same when you do this um, on the domain upon which it's defined, which I haven't given to you, but from memory, it should be from zero to one. Okay, so let's have a go at answering this one. So I want to integrate this guy from zero to one, but to find the expected value, all I have to do is multiply by x, the whole function there. So you can see that doesn't really add much difficulty to the problem. I'm just multiplying now. So x f of x will equal to, let's multiply this whole expression here by x, right? So uh, that'd be just six x squared, one minus x. And now I'm going to integrate that on its domain from zero to one. Uh, 6x squared, 1 minus x. Probably easier to expand in this case. So that's going to give me 0 to 1, 6x squared minus 6x cubed. Be something nice. X cubed. Oh, actually, you know what? Let's factorize that to 6. That'll probably make things a little bit easier for me. Let's go ahead and integrate now. So that's going to be x cubed on three minus x to the power four on four from zero to one. So we're gonna get one on three minus one on four minus zero, I guess if you wanna talk about that. going to be 1 on 12 or 6 on 12 which is just uh, half actually cool not too bad uh, variance now we have a formula for that as well that's this guy over here so that's just now note that the uh, mean is mu here that's mu squared that's same as e of x all squared uh, and this is now just x squared times f of x so if I write that over here, x squared f of x would equal to, that's just 6x cubed, 1 minus x, and mu squared would just be 1 over, one over 2 all squared, so that's just a quarter, right? And let's just put that all in. So we've got 0 to 1 x squared f of x minus mu squared. So mu squared's outside that, just be aware. Say that that's equal to the variance, hey? The variance of x equals to, no idea why that guy is, okay, let's fix that, no, cool. Uh, zero to one, so that's six x cubed, one minus x. Take away a quarter. And same idea, let's x, Band and factorize in a second. So 6x cubed minus 6x to the 4 minus a quarter. Factorize that 6 again. So that's going to be from 0 to 1. x cubed minus x to the 4. And Go ahead and integrate that. Maths again. One on twenty. Oh, I've got to do more <laughs> mental arithmetic here. Uh, six on twenty minus one on four, which is the same as. Wait, is that just one on 20? <laughs> Again. 
<laughs> That's funny, isn't it? Yeah, what's going on there? Okay, cool. So we have two answers. Uh, the mean was half, and the variance is one on twenty. So, like you can see that that's not essentially a difficult problem. It's actually just integration, but it's just knowing what to do with that. It's like uh, they have to give you these formulas in order for you to actually solve that problem there. And it's not a question of whether a student would be able to do it or not. It's a question of, hey, is this in the exam or not? There should be just a yes or no. Well, actually, no, I'll take that back. So there are kind of things which, you know, you don't really have to give a clear yes or no question on if it's like a really hard problem. Um, you know, you can't just always say, oh, yeah, this is um, definitely going to be in there. This is definitely not going to be in there. I understand that completely. In fact, yeah, I've talked to you about this many times before, you know. Um, but they should really, you know, say like, hey, is this particular skill required of students um, without having that kind of ambiguity there. Anyway, that's just a, a short little thing on finding the mean variance of a continuous random variable and hopefully Nessa clarifies that up at some stage or another.